Hey everyone, Fang right here, back with episode 2 of Austerity. And uh, today, we're going to be going into the Athenium of Torn Pages, the area made by, well, yours truly. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's get on in there. Um, this area started off really weirdly, actually, when I was making it. Um, I really just, I built this hallway and pretty much just had a giant open section next to me. Um, so this is, like, directly in the center bottom of the area. And, uh, I pretty much designed it this way because, well, I wanted a lot of space to build. I love building libraries. I think they're probably my favorite kind of interior structure to build. And so, um, yeah, I figured what better to do than make a library for austerity. There's skellies up here, so I gotta be cautious. Luckily, I actually have a bow right now. So while these guys are going to be dangerous, they're not going to be absurdly deadly. They're just going to be annoying as shit. Oh, thank goodness. I was really expecting that skeleton to stay up here and shoot me off the platform, to be honest, so I got really lucky there. Um, yeah, but uh, so I pretty much just started this area with the goal of making kind of an interesting library-esque area out of, uh, well, what I had. And, uh, I think it turned out really, really well. I'm incredibly proud of what this area turned out to be. I used every inch of space I could possibly get in this thing. And, uh, I think it shows. And I'm really, really happy with it. It's tough as nails, though. This, this area is really hard. It kind of comes with the territory of it having to be a compact area. And the spawners do not behave. But, um, I think we did a pretty decent job of balancing things out. Uh, this area primarily serves as your first, uh, close encounter with a lovely shield. You also get a bow here if you didn't have one already. Really just, you know, a couple useful items here and there. Fun fact, you can actually fall into that lava if you step in one of those two spots. And you're super unfortunate, I guess. Alright, this is gonna be an interesting one. Basically, I, I know where a lot of stuff is. Actually, I should know where everything is in this area, so I'm pretty much just trying to play around that knowledge. Like the fact that there's cave spiders in there. It's horrifying, really. Um, I also had to uh, spend some time horribly nerfing the uh, really awful creeper spawner that was in here a while ago. Um, it was just, it was in such a bad spot, and it meant that by the time you actually got there, there were like 50 bajillion creepers spawned already. Alright, let's take out the spawner, and go get our loot from down here. Actually, uh, expected more zombies to have spawned down here, but I mean, I'm grateful that they didn't. But I hear a lot of spiders, and that's gonna make things a huge pain in the butt later. Hopefully it's not the cave spiders. I did toss that torch down, but uh, we'll see. I think I'm going to deal with this side first. Oh, yep, there's more spiders. And I am out of arrows. Hurrah. There we go. Okay. Creeper spawner very hopefully neutralized. And if one does spawn, I've, you know, I've got my shield now. Things shouldn't be too bad. Okay. Yeah, we reduced the range on that spawner, and uh, I think that did a lot. Good, good, good. I'm glad it plays as well as I hoped it did. However, oh, the cave spiders down below are going to be an absolute nightmare, especially since I do not have a bow. So, let's see how this goes. Hello, friend. Oh, look at that. Already hit me. These things are bloody impossible to hit. So what we really want to do is, yeah, just snipe the spawner out and land a hit or two on a cave spider. God! Yeah, any any mob with a small hitbox is just absurdly annoying to fight. Um, really under just any circumstance, but especially cave spiders because of how dangerous they are. Oh my god, there's three of them. Yeah, let's, let's not deal with that yet. Let's just back off. Uh, heal up a little bit. And then we'll make a move. Uh, these poison poison splashers aren't going to do anything against these guys. So I think we're better off just backing off and uh, 
letting yourself heal. Luckily, we don't have to worry about any more spawning, because we've actually dealt with that problem. I can't believe that one hit me. That is just bullshit. Oop, hello, friend. You do everything you can to knock them away, and they still hit you. It's just... it's brutal. Okay, we don't want to be standing there yet. We want to pop our last apple before we do anything else. And then we will, uh, actually rush in there and, uh, and deal with things. So, let's see here. Um, food isn't too bad. I'll have to cook the, the fish, but, like, you know, they're available. For now, I'll pop these three bread. Did he go up, or is he over here? There he is. Oh, God, there's two of them still. Shit. Run, Fang, Run! coming. It's coming for me. Okay. Let's see if we can get a good spot. Yep. There we go. Come on, bud. Good, he's taking some damage. And he dipped me. Crap. Did another one actually come? Or am I safe? I think I'm safe. Whew! On the plus side, that chest in there is pretty good. So, I mean, at least the loot is worth it. Confirm one didn't climb up with me. Good, good. Is the other one still around here somewhere? Alright, I guess we're gonna be reduced to some cookies and some mushroom stew for right now. But, um, in just a second, I'm gonna go ahead and pop a furnace down, and we will cook up those fish. Alright, where is he? There he is. Come on. Wow. That really hit me? God, cave spiders suck. I don't know why they got put in this area, to be frank. Uh, unbreaking one, we got the armored shield. Yeah, basically you just get a bunch of really nice stuff out of this chest, and it makes the, the effort really honestly worthwhile. Some cobwebs, some string, two enchanted books, a bunch of leather, some free blocks, a pork chop, uh, another mushroom stew. We're actually just going to go ahead and eat the pork chop now. You know, I might as well. But it's these, uh... Tough skin leggings that are really solid, um, but then the other really nice thing is actually the shield. We just picked up the armored shield. It's a fancy pattern, but also gives us a whole extra armor point, which at this point in the game is a really nice addition. Anyway, um, from here we actually have two paths, and I'm gonna actually take the um, I'm gonna take the non-disc path first, I think, and that's over here. It's a little dangerous, and uh, I'm totally fine with that, but I think we've let a lot of spiders spawn. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the door open, and I'd just like to get some basic lighting down before anything else. And we're actually gonna leave and go cook that fish, and then we're gonna come back in. So if I can get some lighting down now, when we come back, all the uh, spiders will hopefully not be there anymore. Oh, look, more cave spiders. Might actually have a decent time dealing with this guy. Nope. JK. Three. F How many swings am I going to miss against this guy? Four? Three? Something like that? It's really painful. They're just they're just not fun to fight, you know? And I hear more. And I see more now. Two. Okay, it takes two fully charged bow shots to deal with those guys. As I may have mentioned, um, I went pretty hard on this area to uh, use up every available bit of space I could, and I, I really did. Like, there are so few empty spaces left in this area. It's kind of absurd, to be honest. Let's see. Another angry zombie. There's some more of those. Oh, yeah, sure. I'll ditch that for these. Um, I think we'll go ahead and go up first as this is better loot. I hate using that stew now, but I might as well. You know, if I'm gonna step out of here. Oh, dear. Hello, friends. There's one down. Shoot me. Wow. How much health are you chilling with today, man? Should be one more skelly to fight. Oh, make that two. So this is the dreaded skelly hallway number one. Which 
It's, it's pretty scary, to say the least. Uh, we're gonna put these on the bar simply because I don't have anything else to put there right now. Anyway, once I get this Mr. Scary out, should be able to take him out. There we go. Now, uh, spawners are down along here somewhere. They're well, they're well tucked away. Um, they're pretty dangerous, too. I think there's also... Ah, oh, yeah, there it is. That's right. Couldn't remember where it was. I think that might be the first piece of cobble you can freely get in this map as well, I might add. Fun fact. Anyway, up here's nasty. Hmm. That should have not hit me. Oh, dear. And my sword is broken. Boy, we are just falling apart today. Okay, let's see. Replacements, replacements. We're gonna put a pick in my main hand. Do I have any food on me? I have some rotten flesh, so we're gonna eat it. Because this is trapped. Badly. As you can actually pretty clearly see. There we go. Let's go set this over here. I don't want it. Now you go ahead and pop this with a wooden axe. And break that. Nope, nope, break that. There we go. Thank you. Alright. Take our loot. Golden apple and two splashes of instant health. We can get rid of these poison splashes now. And I'm actually... You know what? No, I'm gonna save that. But, uh, the rest of this junk I can dump off here. And, uh, yeah, let's head back to base. And, um, refuel. There's still another section over here that we have to get to, down the stairs. But, um, I think we'll pretty expertly dismantle that when we get back, for sure. I believe in us. By us, I mean me. By me, I mean my incredible Minecraft talents, as you could see last episode where I got defeated in the first dungeon. I'm very good at this game, I promise. <laughs> Alright, um, so we're going to head down here, and we're going to cook up this fish in the furnace. I guess we'll just kind of get generally ready for things. Um, what's the quickest way down without accidentally killing myself? Go with that. Perfect. Lovely. Brilliant. Okay, we got 16 fish, which means to call... Uh... I don't know if I have a mess of this. Uh, I guess this is the chest we're using for storage, so we will continue to use it for storage. We have an unbreaking one and a fortune one pickaxe. Or, uh, enchanting books. Wow, I just called them pickaxes. We're going to put that cobblestone in there, as well as the shield and the, well, everything. We don't need the extra bow. We are going to need to make ourselves another sword, however. And there are our crafting benches chilling back there. So let's make it happen. Bam. Look at that magic right there. Alright, while we're here, I mean, I might as well use the extra sticks to make some torches, even though we've got a bunch. How's our food cooking coming? We got four. Let's go ahead and eat some. Now, what's really nice is um, when you destroy webs, you get string. Duh, obviously. And there's actually webs in chests in Athenium of Torn Pages. And uh, this guy takes fishing rods for raw fish if you don't want to waste your time fishing. So... You can actually make use of the wood that you earn, um, really just everywhere. Um, Athenium is packed with it, Soggy Ascent has some as well, and uh, convert them into raw fish and then cook it all up if you don't want to spend your time fishing. Uh, I'm a big fan of that system, and that's actually why I scattered a lot of cobwebs around Athenium after, uh, what's his name, Angry Joe? Lunatic Joe uh, got added, because I thought that would make for some, some decent gameplay, taking a normally trash item and actually making it semi-reasonable loot, if you know what I mean. So uh, I, I like that kind of gameplay where the player is able to make use of an item they normally wouldn't care about. In this case, it's a little less obvious of a use, but it's a use nevertheless. Um, in fact, I actually dumped a bunch of stuff like the rotten flesh. No, I ate the rotten flesh, but I dumped stuff like the bones in a chest, and I really shouldn't because having free access to wood is never really anything to complain about, and it actually makes wood a technically infinite resource. Now, what's also kind of funny too, though, is if you turn a, um, a bone into bone meal, you can probably get more wood, but really, if you don't want to spend your time growing, 
it's there is kind of an efficient trade as far as I can tell. And I'm fine with that, you know? It's not really a big complaint. Um, let's talk about Athenium a little more since we're going to be heading back there. Um, as I mentioned, it's an area that I basically tried to make use of as much space as humanly possible. So it's got two branches. I kind of mirrored them and then made them significantly different after I'd done so. Um, and it plays around with a top and a bottom on both sides and then leads you excuse me sorry and then it leads you um into kind of a big open room that uh you saw a little teaser of at the end of last episode and uh then up to the disc and uh you'll see that all on camera very very shortly um hopefully i don't spend too much time in this episode we're already at a pretty decent episode length and we've only done half of this zone um, but I would rather not <laughs> split it up, especially because at the start of episode three, I would just, you know, blaze right through the end of this place. Anyway, let's head to the downstairs, and then we'll head over and conquer the disc, hopefully. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty great. I'm a big fan. Mostly because I made it, but also because I'm a big fan. All right, let's kind of blitz in here. Most of the spawners should be inactive right now. So it'll make running through here a little bit easier anyway. I about to say, I heard that spider. No! You're a beast! A treacherous beast. Okay. Um, yeah, there's the cave spider spawner. Very evil. Very, very evil. Also, just for funsies, we put uh, magma blocks there because, I mean, who doesn't want to accidentally step on magma blocks and die? Uh, there's some apples. Here's a new wooden sword we'll go ahead and use, because it's actually very helpful against spiders. Um, we also get a tough skin helmet, which is actually just in time, because that helmet was about to run out. And a, uh, a new chest plate, which is actually better than another tunic. Fun fact. Uh, additionally, we get some more arrows. I don't really care about the lingering potion of harming, to be honest. It doesn't really do anything against most dangerous mobs. Um, those being, like, uh... Like, zombies, a skeletons especially. Pretty much undead harming pots don't really do anything, too. So they're really just more of a waste of time. There's a chest here with the piercing dagger, the best uh, early game sword, and yet another lovely enchanting book. Once we get a hold of anvils, these become incredibly useful, but until then, pretend they're awesome loot. Sound good? Sounds fair to me. Oh, I flipped that one by accident. I intentionally set them to a uh, knight just because I thought the blue looked a little weirder than the normal color. No other reason than that, to be perfectly honest. Um, another thing I actually tried to do with this area was make use of some of the newer blocks. Um, just tried to do some weird things with them. Alright, here's the big area I was talking about. Um, if we weren't getting light errors, it would be even cooler. But we are getting light errors, so we're just going to deal with it. Our creeper friend. I believe this is the area that, or this is the section that we get anvils in. However, I could be kind of wrong about that. Anyway, the uh, the core goal for this area is just run around, kind of in a loop, and uh, clear out the mobs as you see them. There's skeletons in here. There's creepers in here. So it's all just very dangerous. If I can get nothing to explode, I'll be especially happy. Hello, friend. Let's head this way, if you don't mind. There we go. Another one down. Another one bites the dust. And another creep gone, and another creep gone. I killed another creeper, and there's spiders coming for me. Oh, God, run. Where'd he go? I see him. Hear him. See more of him. Hey, creeper. You can you can just die to my arrow wrath. You appear to be passive right now. You, on the other hand, do not. Oh dear, there's another one above me. So, how are you doing, friend? You're mean. Should be a spider up there. Come on, come on down. Mr. Spider number seven, come on down! Oh, I hear zombies now. Okay, we have our work cut out for us. Alright, um, 
I think another thing I was really proud of with this area was how, ooh, hello, how twisty I managed to get it to be. For a very limited amount of space, this area plays as if it was huge. And I'm really proud of that. I am really bad at fighting skellies. What the heck? <laughs> that just blocked the skelly shot, and I'm truly uncertain as to why. I also have no idea what the skelly is doing. But I mean, I'm not going to complain, I'm just confused, you know? Hmm. Must have disabled that spawner somehow. Um... Let's go get rid of the rest of these creeper spawners here, and then we will deal with the skeletons and the zombie spawner. Skellies come up from above there. Um, they're actually defending the anvil, if I remember right. So uh, we'll we'll swing over there and, and deal with them in a second. Until then, we've got another one of these book zombies to fight off. Very efficient there. Well done, Fang. Well done. And in here, we got our tough skin tunic. Um, you know what, I'm actually going to stick with the golden chest plate for the time being, but we'll probably shift back in a little bit. Uh, there's a looting one, we can get rid of these, and then that, don't need these, plus three armor, not, not with the tough skin. Uh, and our first upgraded bow, a blast bolt bow with punch one. Uh, don't need anything else, I'm going to take the cooked pork chop and eat it immediately. You're only giving out one of them, which I did. Then, uh... There's no reason not to just go ahead and pop it, to be honest. Anyway, my, my trick for dealing with these skellies is literally just this. Stand there, put the shield up, and uh, start some infighting. Or, or not. There we go. Look how efficient that was. I'm really proud of that. That was great. Don't think there's anything in those, but there are two anvils, and we are going to take them. Because, I mean, seriously, they're anvils. Who doesn't want these? These things are going to be so helpful as we do this. Especially because we've already earned a number of very nice enchanted books. Should be one skelly below us. We could totally be a complete cheat right now and skip over to the disc, but because it's my area, and I feel like it's my obligation to show it off, I'm going to go through it in the proper order, and uh, you know, just have a good time with it. If I die to it, I'd be pretty happy with myself, but if I don't die to it, I'd also be pretty happy with myself. Let's rush over here real quick. Um, there actually used to be a skeleton spawner on the other side of that bridge. However, after I died repeatedly to it in a horrible fashion during testing, um, I decided it would probably be better to not have it there. Call me crazy. Uh, a bunch more cobwebs, uh, some more cookies, nice, nice, some more leather. I'm actually going to get rid of that. Uh, that's my thorns book. There's another instant splasher, or instant health splasher, there we go, in English. And over here, we have cobwebs, some more apples. Our efficiency 2 wooden axe and a golden helmet, which uh, unfortunately we have a tough skin on, so I'm actually not going to take that. Need to find those tough skin boots though, because my boots are just about to break. So, let's go ahead and make our way up and across. Oh, or not. Whew, that was really bad. Let's go ahead and make our way up and across here. Um, this room is dangerous. Yeah, speaking of. Speaking of dangerous. If I am not careful, I'm going to fall in the Alright, um, so I'm going to cheat here briefly. Let's see if I can poke my head into this room. We can get a little bit of light down in advance, because over here is dangerous. As is pretty much everything in this area, to be honest. Um, it's very tight and compact, in a, in a good way, I would say. But uh, it makes it very challenging to, to deal with. There we go, look at this efficiency here. Dealing with, oh my god, so many book zombies. Oh god, oh god. I do like this AoE sweeping attack, though. It's it's very useful for dealing with large groups of mobs like this. Now that Mo Yang has decided that um, 
you know, we shouldn't be allowed to spam quite a bit. So I guess I get it. I hear a lot of mobs, though. I'm letting so many things spawn, and I'm regretting it so badly. There's a spider. It's actually... Oop, hello, friend. There's another spider. This area actually used to be utterly packed with creepers until fairly recently. And uh, I think getting rid of those creepers was a very good de design choice, because... Uh, Generally, it's not very fun in a, in a minimalist, uh, minimalist, geez, I can't speak today, in a minimalist type map to have 90% of the area just broken in front of you, in my personal opinion. I'm actually going to leave that splash in. There they are, I knew they were around here somewhere. Good timing, too. Um, but just, uh, the creepers were causing a lot of problems in that they would just destroy 90% of every wall in every room, and it just, it didn't, it didn't make a lot of fun gameplay, you know? If... If you're playing a minimalist map, but the entire area is pretty much just turned into a, you know, the set of bedrock cubes that were made to enclose it, you're not going to have as much fun as you could. So that was a change I was very quick and eager to make once we, uh, we got some initial testing in. Uh, the map actually, uh, launched with the creeper heavy version, and then, uh, was relaxed a little bit later. Which, like I said, was for the best, um... I'm happy to be playing this version and not the one with 10 billion creepers. And I, I like creepers as a tool, just they're better when a map is more prepared for them, if you know what I mean. <laughs> These spiders are so stupid. <laughs> Alright, come on, bud. Come on out. Oop. And then I am so stupid. <laughs> I guess it's only fair, right? Alright, come on, bud. Fall. Fall on me! Or I'm just gonna shoot you. That works. Nope. You got me. Okay. Right. Oh my goodness! You think there's enough of you? I was gonna say, I believe that one just spawned. Anyway, we're just about to pop out into the big open room again. This part's really cool. There's another book zombie. Hello, friend. I internally called these, uh... I'm gonna call them page golems, but, um, I don't think we gave them a custom name, so I'm just gonna call them books on this. Let's see, there is the nimble pickaxe, and we can get rid of these now. Some more blocks, smite one, a splasher that we don't need. Basically, I'm just kind of trying to save space for the disc when we get to it, which is not too far away now. Um, oh dear, I forgot how many skellies were up there. Thanks, bud. Um, a big reason I put carpet on the ground was actually not to deal with the, um, not to deal with, uh, decoration or anything, but actually because it meant that you couldn't put, um, torches down efficiently, which is kind of mean, but you know what? It's, it's supposed to be a kind of tricky map. There we go. There's the stone sword. I'm gonna keep this one, drop that one, and we'll head back down. Because there's still a lot of skellies. Um, the last hallway is nicknamed the Skelly Hallway, or the Skeleton Hallway of Doom, because there are a lot of skeletons in it. Probably too many. Not that I care. I've missed it. But there's a lot of skeletons in it. Interesting, I didn't think skellies would go all derpy on, um, on carpet. I guess they do. Good to know. I guess. They're like spinning in weird circles in here. Like half the time they're being nice and, you know, efficient skellies. So I don't know what's going on. Okay, this is going to be absurd. And you will probably laugh at me. But that burnt out torch was stunningly hard to make happen. For, like, such a stupid minor detail, like, it it took a lot just to find the space to put those two redstone pieces. Which sounds absurd, but you can't just put a redstone block behind it to burn one out, shockingly. Um, you do actually have to have a directed signal. Oh boy! It's gonna be scary. You do have to have a directed signal firing 
at the redstone torch to make it look burnt out. So, making that, because the, uh, the, the room is only supposed to be a block away from, uh, the big room, with a bedrock wall between it, was crazy hard, and it took a lot of kind of weird, uh, building movement for me to make that happen. And really, I had no reason to do it, but I just wanted to. And so I did. And, uh... Just... Sucks for you, right? No. I think, I think it turned out really nice. Um, I'm pretty happy with that decision. Oh, boy. This is getting bad. Hello? God! Hit him, hit him, come on. There we go, there we go. Get the war going, let me eat. You two fight it out. I'm gonna break this. And then you should die. Perfect. Look at that. And then right up here is the disc. We did it. Alright. Um. I also thought it was really funny that, just by pure chance, um, my area turned out to be the cat disc. That was... that was really something. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of happy that managed to happen. Anyway, uh, we don't need that dead bush. We'll go fetch a different item to put in that slot, and then we will head back to the monument and call it an episode. Um, I'm legitimately kind of surprised that, as an informed player who made this area and knows the layout of it very well. Uh, this still took me about 30 minutes to go through. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of proud of that. But, uh, that says a lot. Especially because I, you know, went through every bit of it in the proper order with full knowledge of where to go without rushing, but, you know, kind of playing it generally properly. That's that's really good ga amount of gameplay for a minimalist map. Alright, we'll take that splasher. I uh, don't think we can efficiently take that splasher unless I'm missing something. That's spruce, that's spruce. Look at that. Oh my, my, my armor though. <laughs> okay, we'll have to make ourselves some new helmets. It looks like all those skellies were um, quite the match for my gear. That's fine, that's fine. We have a lot of leather, so it's not too big of a deal. Um, there's that. I have a plate body still. <laughs> there we go. I'll take this helmet and put it on. Might as well. It's free. Get my cat disc back, and uh, we'll head back down. I think we've cleared out everything that can... Sp oh, we have missed a spawner, guys. All right, where is this one? Or he was... Oh, no, I think that was the one that fell down earlier. All right. Um, I, I hope you like this area. Um, this is Athenium of Torn Pages. I'm really happy with how this one turned out. Should have hid some loot up there. I feel dumb now. Anyway, um, yeah, let's head back to the monument and pop this sucker in the monument. Uh, off camera, I'm going to go ahead and do like some inventory sorting and kind of get myself set up. And next time, we will head into Verdant Grotto, which uh, I think is a really cool area. Very well put together. A lot of fun to play. Up we go. Three. Two, one, dodge the explode, still hit me. <laughs> Alright, area completed. Athenium of Torn Pages by Fangride. Alright, everybody. Thank you so much for watching episode two of Austerity. As before, if you want to download this map, there is the info in the description. Um, yeah. Thanks, thanks so much for watching, and I really hope you enjoyed. I will see you in episode three. Bye!